Hello everyone and welcome back to Fly High. Today we're addressing a question that many helicopter pilots have likely encountered. What happens if the engine fails? Do the rotor blades suddenly stop, causing the helicopter to just fall out of the sky? It's a question that has crossed the minds of many and in this video we'll be delving into a critical aspect of helicopter safety, the art of auto rotation. Before we explore the incredible world of auto rotation, just a quick disclaimer. I fly Robinson helicopters, so my explanations are based on their procedures. While the fundamentals apply to most helicopters, specific procedures may vary. Always consult your pilot's operating handbook for your specific aircraft. That said, let's start with the basics and understand what auto rotation is and why it's so important. Under normal flight conditions, the engine is the driving force turning the rotor blades through the air. The air comes in from above, passes through the blades, generating lift and keeping the helicopter aloft. The rotor speed is critical and you can find the maximum and minimum rotor speed limits in your pilot's operating handbook. Although it is very rare, what actually happens in the event of an engine failure when the engine ceases to drive the rotor blades? Here's where the freewheeling system comes into play. Essentially, the freewheeling unit automatically disengages the engine from the main rotor, allowing the blades to continue spinning freely. It operates much like the freewheeling mechanism on your bicycle. However, the rotor's rotational inertia isn't enough to keep the blades spinning. Drag quickly reduces the rotor speed, so this is where the magic of auto-rotation comes into play. It harnesses the aerodynamic forces of relative wind to maintain rotor speed. Let's explore the mechanics of auto-rotation in more detail. The airflow coming through the rotor disc reverses. Instead of coming in from above, as it does during normal flight, the motion of the descending helicopter forces air to flow through the rotor disc from below. Think of it like a windmill, a pinwheel, or those flying maple seeds you may have seen. This reverse airflow keeps the rotor blades turning, even without engine power. The rate of descent in auto rotation is typically rapid at around 1,500 to 2,000 feet per minute, much faster than in regular flight. However, the upward flow of air through the rotor disc keeps the blades turning, maintaining the RPM and producing sufficient lift for a controlled descent and a safe landing. Now let's delve into the key phases of auto rotation entry, gliding and flare. To initiate auto-rotation, you swiftly lower the collective pitch full down, simultaneously applying slight aft cycle to prevent a nosedive and right pedal to maintain trim. These actions set the helicopter into a rapid but controlled descent. Next, we have the gliding phase. During this phase, you establish a steady airspeed and rotor RPM, ideally facing into the wind, and you select a clear landing area. The helicopter remains fully maneuverable during this phase. A combination of turns and airspeed alterations may be used during the gliding phase to adjust the flight path to reach a suitable landing spot. The advantage of being in a helicopter is you don't necessarily need a huge field or runway to land. However, choosing the right landing spot is crucial for a successful auto rotation. You should look for a clear, obstacle-free area, which could be a field, a road, or any open space without trees, buildings, crops, rocks, or other obstacles. A steep slope or uneven rocky terrain could lead to a rollover during landing. The best approach is, of course, to land into the wind. Keep an eye out for power lines and other potential hazards. Select a spot that provides enough room for a safe landing. The more space you have, the greater your ability to maneuver. When initially practicing auto rotation in a Robinson R22 helicopter, you most probably will concentrate on the entry and gliding phases with power recovery, without necessarily auto rotating all the way to the ground. The goal is to maintain a steady glide at approximately 60 to 70 knots while keeping your RPM within the range of 97 to 110%. Just as in regular powered flight, you'll control your airspeed using forward and aft cyclic inputs. 
be aware that these cyclic inputs will have an impact on your RPM. Pulling aft or applying left and right cyclic will increase rotor RPM due to blade loading, while pushing forward on the cyclic will decrease rotor RPM. To maintain the desired RPM between 97 and 110%, you will use the collective control. Slightly raising the collective will decrease RPM due to the increased pitch angle and drag. And vice versa, lowering the collective will reduce drag and increase RPM. During this gliding phase, your focus will be divided between diligently cross-checking your RPM, monitoring your airspeed and keeping an eye on your chosen landing spot. Several factors can influence the rate of descent in autorotation. Density altitude, gross weight, bank angle, trim, airspeed and rotor RPM. Therefore, the primary means to control the rate of descent are through adjustments in the airspeed and rotor RPM. As you gain proficiency, you can fine-tune your airspeed and RPM to different flight configurations. Zero airspeed results in the highest rate of descent while maintaining a speed of 75 knots with 90% RPM maximizes the glide distance. However, regardless of your chosen configuration, when descending below 500 feet above ground level, it is absolutely crucial to return to an airspeed of approximately 60 to 70 knots and increase your RPM to at least 97%. This prepares you for the upcoming flare phase and landing. Once you've become comfortable with the entry and gliding phases, you will begin practicing the flare and landing phases. With your helicopter in a steady glide, as you approach the ground, typically around 40 feet, or what's often referred to as treetop level, you should apply aft cyclic to initiate the flare, causing the helicopter to pitch up. This action increases rotor RPM and generates additional lift subsequently reducing your descent rate and forward speed. During the flare, the Robinson tends to bank and yaw slightly towards the right, requiring cyclic and pedal control to counteract this. This step is crucial for a soft touchdown. When you're about 8 feet from the ground, you'll need to use forward cyclic to level the helicopter, preparing for touchdown. At this point, your instructor may have executed a power recovery and you finish by transitioning into a hover. However, if a full touchdown landing is to be performed, you should allow the helicopter to descend and just before ground contact, raise the collective using the remaining rotor energy to cushion the landing. Now the speed at which you touch down and the length of your ground run depend on how you manage the flare. The more pronounced and extended the flare, the slower your touchdown speed and shorter your ground run. Throughout this whole phase, coordination is vital. Keep your eyes outside on the horizon to maintain precise control over both cyclic and pedal inputs to ensure the helicopter's nose stays straight ahead during the flare and touchdown. After touchdown, Remember not to make any abrupt movements with the cyclic and collective controls. Instead, keep your feet actively engaged on the yaw pedals to ensure the helicopter maintains a straight heading until it comes to a full stop. Maintaining control and coordination is key to a successful autorotation landing. Now, autorotation isn't without its challenges. Common errors include insufficient anti-torque pedal use when reducing power, abrupt nose lowering when entering, failure to maintain recommended RPM, flaring at the wrong height, flaring too aggressively or not aggressively enough, terminating the flare too high or applying excessive up collective, failing to level the helicopter in time before touchdown, and not touching down in a level attitude with the nose straight ahead. Knowing how to perform auto rotation is an integral part of a helicopter pilot's training. A skilled pilot continues to practice and refine this maneuver even long after passing the initial skill test. Please note that practice autorotation is only permitted with an instructor on board. Here are a couple of real life situations where pilots found themselves in challenging situations and successfully employed autorotation to avert disaster. Hats off to those pilots!
So there you have it, a closer look at the remarkable art of autorotation. It's clear that autorotation is complex and can be quite startling the first couple of times, but with repetition it can be easily mastered. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, fly safe and see you soon on Fly High.